On today's show, it is the final Friday show of the season. There's still a lot of matchups to break down, some really fun games to talk about, some interesting discussion about shopping carts, and then a final fantasy face-off punishment you don't want to miss. Make sure you subscribe because we don't go anywhere in the off season. We still got some shows coming out. Subscribe right now and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Friday, January 5th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike, the Fantasy Hitman, right? Jason Moore. I'm Andy Holloway. The final Friday show in a while. Ooh, final Friday till August. Because uh, this is the end of the Week 18 preview for the scoundrels out there that are suffering within a league in which the commissioner is inebriated. <laughs> or just old. Yeah. That's mo- <laughs> like, let's yeah. be honest. Most here. of the time what it is is it's old leagues mm-hmm. that have a tradition They're- that they don't want to disrupt because clicking renew is just so much easier. No, Jason nailed it. Like, if you are in a league where you have an unfortunate Week 18 championship and you've been trying to get it to change, go to the commissioner and, just, and be like, it just it makes you look really old. Mm. Like, nice. Young men. Yeah. Young women. They play till week 17. That's right. I they mean. Be, and, and that's right. <laughs> it's not I, even a joke. And I'm not sure there's a commission out there who could withstand that barrage of like. Oh, the age barrage? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. A little age. Doesn't shaming. it seem like Papa Josh would do a week 18 league? He does. Yeah. No, he's, he's, he's saying, I mean. Physical appearance, he looks like he would. He's a week 19er. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we go to the playoffs. If the NFL's still going, we're going. Even Josh is offended by that comment. <laughs> Happy birthday this month, by the way. This Thanks. month? Yeah. He's, I'm <laughs> well, that's how Josh, to see you here. That's how Josh handles birthdays. Some people, and, and I've noticed this. I mean, some people, the birthday, I think it's the first few years of your life. Like, Papa Josh, you're sitting in Deucer's Alley today. Did you have, like, was birthday made very special for your first 10, 15 years of your life? Dude, we got sticks. We got rocks. It was great. <laughs> no, but so seriously, no. did they make a big deal out of it, or is it yeah. the opposite? Oh, it was always a big deal. Well, like I just think that's some something to it. Like, it set you up to... Take the day off <laughs> from work <laughs> for your birthday in your 40s. All right. we None of us have ever done that, have we? Taking our birthday off? No. 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 Not since the Peter Piper days. <laughs> Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, no, I, I would. I mean, yeah, you still went to school. You still go to school if it, if it landed on my birthday. My kids would always ask for that. They'd be like, "Can, can I just have the day off?" And we're like, "No, they're in school today." Yeah, just and enjoy you, the attention at school. Yeah, like I, I'm not taking that letter. That school's gonna write me. Be like, your kids missing too much school. Well, I, um, I'm excited to finish up these week 18 matchups as uh, quickly as possible. <laughs> It's all about it, having a good time. There are, I mean, there are big games this week. There are, yes. there are playoff style games this week. There are players that are, um, are certainly going to be reaching for thresholds that are reaching for playoff berths that are uh, going to be on the field. And we'll talk about more of them today. You guys did a good job on yesterday's podcast. Yeah, we did. It's going through the, sh- you know, going through the matchups that you covered yesterday. Did you guys have starts yesterday? We, we did. did. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Good ones. Oh, the best ones. I didn't hear that part of the show. I imagine. Yeah. Um, <laughs> fantasychamps.com, if you need a championship ring or belt, you can get, or sorry, a championship trophy or belt, you get a free ring with the code free ring. We just asked them to put that code right on the nose. And uh, I was thinking maybe I should have ordered more than one ring. Like, I ordered one for the league like that I buy? want. No, I just mean, like, I, do you buy them for your, like, peripheral leagues if you win them? Uh, I, I took a couple extra leagues home this year. I just don't know. Do I get three rings? Yes, it, it's up to you. Yes, no. I mean, as I mean, 
Have you ever won multiple leagues in a year and not gotten a separate ring for each league? I get a ring for Do you each... get them for every league? Yeah. So do you just join, like, extra leagues every year just to... No, I just win more leagues yeah. every year except this year. Which, uh, uh, you like, you're like, if I don't in this sentence apologizing, nah, you'll yeah, get it. I will. Uh, Twitter at the FF Ballers. You can follow us over there all off season long. For those of you who have tuned in throughout the entirety of the year, uh, hopefully you've had a good time. We're, we're back with two shows a week starting next week. And uh, we'll get into the footy awards, which are always very exciting. When you just say footy awards... Every single time that that yeah. phrase is said, I hear the music. It, mm. it is it is so associated. I can recall it instantly. Almost sounds like the um, was it the Looney Tunes music, right? Uh, it, yeah, dun, it's, dun, a, dun, it's a little bit Looney. Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, dun. Mm. Yeah. All right, yeah. it's Friday. Put Clan Friday. Foot Clan Friday, the last Foot Clan Friday for a bit. Can't and have a Foot Clan Friday if there's no Friday show. No. And uh, this week's winner, we always give away $100 to fantasychamps.com on Friday. And this week's winner, a supporter to join the foot.com, Terry Bernardino. Congratulations. So, congrats. You can uh, swag out for free over there. And we appreciate everybody that supports the show. That is where you get an extra episode every week at jointhefoot.com for the whole offseason, the footcast available to you there. Let's talk some news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by USAA Insurance. Well, the Ravens have added Dalvin Cook to that illustrious roster, including Melvin Gordon and Justice Hill. And Dalvin Cook joins a potential Super Bowl competing team. He was linked there this offseason, right? Uh, there was Miami, I don't or was it just Derrick Henry? Yeah, Derrick Henry was. I, I I remember Henry being linked there. I mean, they obviously have a need after losing J.K. Dobbins. Um, this is a team that wants to <laughs> the old, replace the week one injury in the final week of the I'm, season. I'm saying when when the Derrick Henry news was coming up, it was like they they had hardship there, and now since then they lost their budding star right. uh, rookie running back. So th this makes sense. It's just a matter of does he have any juice left. Do you have anything to give? And and at the very least, they can bench more of their regular starters this week and just be like, Dalvin, I know you just got here. You don't know the playbook, but we don't care about this game. Here's the ball. Go. It's the right kind of signing for what the Ravens tend to yeah. add to their backfield, which is aged veterans that know how to pass block and don't have much left in the tank. I mean, we've yeah. seen what? Devonta Freeman and Kenyon Drake, LaShawn McCoy and Melvin Gordon. And, uh, Wait, McCoy was Latavius a Murray. Oh, did I say LaShawn McCoy? Yeah. I meant uh, Le'Veon Bell. Oh, okay. It's like, Although I've... McCoy would have been a perfect Yeah, oh, fan. he would have. Oh, well, he's still out there. <laughs> That's true. What He played for, what, Tampa at the very, very end? My goodness. Kansas City and Tampa to end his the, career. The end of running back careers are like it's just but a whisper that you, you totally forget what happened. But yeah, like without this news, most people don't remember. Wait, Melvin Gordon's a Raven? <laughs> There's a decent chance Dalvin Cook doesn't take a snap next season for anybody. Oh, yeah? for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'd put those odds pretty high. Yeah, I mean, not like Carson Wentz not playing a snap high, but <laughs> Noah Brown ruled out. Robert Woods questionable. Christian Kirk. Feeling good about Christian Kirk being back on the field. He's been practicing. Okay. Trevor Lawrence, shoulder injury, limited, probably going to play. Zay Jones, the hamstring, don't know about that one. We know that Trevor Lawrence is now listed as questionable, so probably going to play. And then Alvin Kamara did not practice the ankle injury. T. Higgins didn't practice the hamstring. We did get – there was a blurb, at least, over the uh, social media that, that Jamar Chase said, I'm going to play, which we were talking about yesterday. That, like With a shoulder injury and nothing to play for, there is a chance that he doesn't, but he says he will. Any other news we need to get into? Devontae Smith didn't practice. Raheem Moster didn't practice. Yeah, it's just the, the Moster one again. is It's Sunday Night Football, so if you are counting on him, you better have a pivot. All right, that was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at usaa.com slash insurance. Fantasy Forecast. All right. Yesterday you guys covered eight matchups 
Yeah, yeah we did. I was really hoping you get through them all. <laughs> Steelers, Ravens, Texans, Colts, Browns, Bengals, Vikings, Lions, Jags, Titans, ti- uh, Jets, Patriots, Falcons, Saints, Buccaneers, Panthers. Right. They would have put them in. I would have done them. Yeah, you would have. I would. I would have run yeah, Burgundy yeah, the heck yeah. out of that. I would have kept rolling. Yeah, I um, appreciate you guys. Having a good time. Yeah. Uh, Cl- uh, Chicago, 7-9. and nine. Packers, 8-8. Eight and eight. DK Sportsbook line, Green Bay minus three at home at Lambeau, over under 45 points. Bears can play spoiler. Packers can just terrorize their own fans by being eliminated two years in a row on the final game of the season. But look at Jordan Love. Look at Jordan Love. Look at him. He's getting it done. Look at this little guy. Look at him go. <laughs> he, he's he been good. I mean, you, you look at his numbers and you compare him to all the top-tier quarterbacks in football. And it's it's pretty comparable. I mean, you look at him against Patrick Mahomes' numbers, and you know what is well, like? well. Do you say top? You said top tier quarterbacks. That's true. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Mahomes. You so say like this, Justin Fields. Yeah. Okay. The career's kind of done. Yeah, for it's Mahomes. really it's really taking a a dump. Mm. Uh, the Bears best record ever for a team holding the number one pick in the last forty years. <laughs> so they have the opportunity to. <laughs> is that a Kyle stat? Of course. This is ridiculous. Yeah, Green Bay beat them in week one. They've been playing really good football, 4-1 and one in the last five games. You know, there have been all these scenarios where, where Chicago can trade the number one to the number two and the number two to the number three and stack up more piles of picks and still get a wide receiver for Mr. Justin Fields. But, um, you know, this this game, it's a big one. I mean, Jordan Love and company playing for their playoff lives. Jaden Reed, big week last week, limited on Thursday. Uh, it is a... This is like one of those convalescent homes during World War One. Mm-hmm. Like everybody is resting on a bed right now. I mean, Khalil Herbert limited with a back injury. Deonta Foreman was a healthy scratch. DJ Moore with the ankle was limited. Cole Komet is limited. Jaden Reed, Dontavian Wicks, Christian Watson, Luke Musgrave limited. Aaron Jones, guess what? Limited. Are they doing a – Limited. Are they like seeing what the other practice report is putting out? Yeah. They're limited. Like, oh, well, you like know a, what? Our guys are limited. Are they battling? Maybe. Seeing who can rest more. Yeah. We got no one out this. there today. We're not even going to be able to field the full team. <laughs> well, <laughs> what's funny is I think that most players on both sides of the ball will play. This is an important game for both teams. Uh, the Bears are on a roll. They're playing good football. They actually look like a, a team on the rise. Like you said, Andy, they're 4-1 and one in their last five games. That's since Justin Fields came back from his injury. Um, they're They're playing to be the spoiler in a divisional matchup. So this game matters to them. And obviously the Packers win and in. So it's a very important game for both sides. The only guys that I'm I'm not sure Cole Komet, you know, his health is a little bit scarier to me. Um, obviously Musgrave is, I don't think, playing. But most of the players, I think, are going to suit up. What was uh, annoying about Komet is that he had such a good first half against Arizona two weeks ago, and then he just fully – he only played 18% of snaps last game and didn't have a fantasy point. So, yeah, I agree with you on that. Makes perfect sense. Anybody else, Khalil Herbert, you have confidence? Yeah, I mean, he's been so good the last couple of weeks. Green Bay is a good matchup. I think you can play Khalil Herbert. Uh, I would love to see a practice report where he's like, he's full uh, today uh, at practice. That would give me more. He's like, yo, he's stuffed. You should have seen him at Thank the buffet. That, he's so that's full. all I heard. <laughs> I saw your face when I said I'd love to see the, a report that Khalil Herbert is full on he's Friday. He's eating again. <laughs> He's trying to put on the pounds for Sunday. Uh, but the last two weeks, man, 22 opportunities, 21 opportunities, top 10 fantasy running back both weeks. Good matchup. If he, if Have he, we heard anything on Foreman? Like, he's he's toast. I'm saying, like, but we don't know the specifics. What is, of what's the, going on It's here? listed as a personal reason, and he's tweeting out cryptic uh, disappointments. And, and what's crazy is he was so good. It looked so good before – then, but uh, I, I don't think you can rely on him after being a healthy scratch two weeks in a row. The Broncos are 8-8, eight and eight, taking on the 7-9 and nine Raiders. DraftKings Sportsbook line, Las Vegas, minus three at home, over and under 37. Both of them eliminated. Really low-scoring game the first time around. Jarrett Stidham, Aiden O'Connor. Josh Jacobs, four straight game-time decision. Um, I'm not excited about this game. Uh, for fantasy purposes? Yeah. I mean, Zamir White? Yeah. Is he playing? Zamir? Yeah. I mean, is he the starter? Is Josh Jacobs going to play? I would imagine with Jacobs, you know, the month-long game time decision is still going, and he is still not practicing. 
So yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm going to go with Zamir White. And Adams was a monster last week with 21 targets, so you can go ahead and play him. It's just it's just not a game I think is going to be very exciting. 37 point over under. We talked a lot about Javante earlier in the week when we were, when we were looking at players that kind of dudded out this year and may not have the best long-term future. You know, Cortland Sutton finally came back to from practice, but he's not playing with Russ. Russ is the one that had the kind of laser vision on him in the end zone. Jarrett Stidham's going to get the opportunity to try to earn a starter position for next year. So um, I would play the kind of core players you've been playing in this matchup and, and probably move on. So the That's question – Adams then, and White. I was going to say the question then is, Cortland Sutton had been a core player. Does the change uh, – it looks like he's progressing through concussion protocol. I expect him to be there. If he's active, would you play Cortland Sutton, or does the Russell Wilson change say, let's bench him? I mean, I I was never that excited about Sutton in the lineup. I was always hopeful for that touchdown, but I would not play him. Okay. Stidham come, was 20 for 32, 224 yards and a touchdown against the Chargers. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Okay. I'm saying for Cortland the, Sutton if you're playing Davis. Sutton. Davis. Cortland Sutton or Gabe Davis? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Gabe Davis. Puka Nakua, who will get no, pinched? No, no, okay. no, Sutton. No. Right. I, I don't think I don't like the Puka situation. What is it, four for 29? Yep. yep. Probably, he'll probably go for 200. Uh, <laughs> Philly at 11 and 5, take it on the 5 and 11 Giants. DK Sportsbook line, Philly minus 5 and a half. The over-under is 42. How many losses in a row for the Eagles? I know they've lost four of five, isn't it? Uh, I, I think they won two weeks ago. Oh, that's right. Yeah, but four of five. Yeah, the Giants. They were 10-1, and one, now they're 11-5. and five. And all right, Philly's fighting for that number two seed. They need the Cowboys to lose to go ahead and win the division. Giants are playing spoiler. It is the divisional game, and they've had some uh, competitive matchups recently. I'm not sure that's an almost step set to me, but I'd be a little bit on the yeah. Oh, oh all okay. right. Andy's almost upset of the week. It's a five and a half point line. The game's in New York. I mean, a chance to keep the Eagles out of the division. It's like the Giants lost by eight last time on the road. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Jalen Hurts, weeks one through eight, 261 passing yards a game. From week nine on, 207 passing yards per game. Mm. He still gets the tush push at the goal line, though, so his fantasy finishes have been pretty good. Top 10 the last three weeks. I wonder and if that is something, though, that is uh, – and I, I, you're 100% right. He scores a billion touchdowns on the ground. He has 15 of them. But 23 touchdowns on the year through the air. I mean, Jordan Love is four more passing touchdowns than Jalen Hurts has at this stage of, of the season. So – I mean, yes, that that's true passing, but I mean, when fifteen rushing, you, you're you. I think you got to look at it in totality. Thirty-eight total touchdowns from Jalen Hurts. That's a great number. Yeah, fifteen rushing touchdowns from a running back. You would be losing your mind. Of course. Yeah, I was just making the point in the passing game. If you're throwing for two hundred a game, like last year, we came out and we were like, "Hey, they should be able to start throwing the ball more." And AJ Brown is going to raise the ceiling, and it happened. But to see it dip back down at the back half of the year and not be as successful and have Devontae Smith banged up and A.J. Brown, you know, there was a little bit of rumbling about locker room problems. Yeah, I mean, A.J. Brown, to start the season from weeks three through nine, every se – I mean, that is a long stretch. That's a stretch of seven games in a row where his worst fantasy finish on the week was the wide receiver 13. He was a, he was a wide receiver one every single week. He hasn't been in the top 13 since that time – in week 10, he, he's actually been a pretty big disappointment for fantasy. I mean, he's still getting enough targets. You're not going to bench him. But th that's the story to me for the Eagles is A.J. Brown has disappeared. And whether that's schematically or, um, you know, obviously he's pitching a fit and uh, causing issues in the locker room. Maybe he thinks he's not getting enough targets. But it's it's been really bad for I him. I mean, 90, you know, since that bye week, the time you mentioned, still on pace for 160 targets in that span. But it would be for ninety two for a thousand and two. That's just a guy. Yeah, that and and no finishes um, inside the top twelve. None with, with a with a hundred and sixty target pace. You should be AJ Brown. That that's on AJ Brown. I mean, you're getting that many targets. Don't tell him that. 
I would never. I would never. He would just, he would just squish me into a jelly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just 200 yards to go around, though, right now in this passing offense. And, uh, you know, Dallas Goddard was your start of the week yesterday, Jason. Yeah, it, you know, he's uh, – He's very involved, and I think Devontae Smith, yes, his yeah, yeah. injury is kind of what leads me to believe that, you know, as I said yesterday, he's he's higher in targets per route run than Devontae Smith and even more than A.J. Brown. It's squishy, squishy into a jelly, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just a little <laughs> – yeah. Look, you play Saquon. Uh, I like Darius Slayton with Tyrod Taylor. I like him against a passing defense that is giving up potentially on pace for the six most passing attempts against them of all time, the Philadelphia secondary. And this was a very competitive game last time out. Uh, Tyrod almost brought them back. So do you guys agree? Do you like Slayton? Yeah, I think he's worth the dart throw. In the, like the, we talked about him yesterday of the, the Gabe Davis arc type of player. Would you go with him or Slayton? And I lean Slayton because of the matchup. Yeah, it's exactly what you called last week. I, I see it again this week. It was a perfect call against the Rams who give up the big plays. The Eagles do too. So Darius Slayton is the the waiver wire guy you want if you are the underdog. Uh, where are you with DeAndre Swift this week? Comfy? Uh, I mean, yeah, I'm starting him. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the Giants get beat on the ground. They're still favored even though they're on the road and there's an almost upset call here. Uh, it's it's a matchup you would play Swift. Five rushing touchdowns on the season for DeAndre Swift. He what is, was it fifteen for uh, Jalen Hurts? Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't know how much Hurts pays. Swift I mean, there, to go yeah, down on the one. But. There's at least five, I believe, DeAndre Swift going down on the one. So which the touchdowns then went to Jalen Hurts. What if it's one of those things? You know how like um, if you try to take a shopping cart out of a. Oh yeah, oh. you cross that yellow line. Yeah, yeah, cross the yeah. line yeah. in a parking yeah, lot and shuts them down. Wink, wink. They've got like an ankle monitor on him and that it, when it gets poof. to the one yard line, just straight zaps down. his legs straight down. Also, has there ever been a larger lie in the entire world? No, no, no. I've tried to cross they sh- that they line. They shut them down, Those, man. What? Oh, yeah, hundred percent. They lock the wheels. Yeah, wheels go. Wheels go break. Yeah, there's there's something built into the. Uh, no. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. Yeah, man. I've done it. I tested. How many that. of these have you stolen, Mike? <laughs> None. Yeah, because you can't. <laughs> Unless you put they it lock, in a truck. They lock the wheels, man. So they put they they, they spend that amount of money. It's not that much money. What it, it, what is doing it? Is it a magnet? Yeah, it's like a it's a very like it's not a high tech situation. They just like put something in the ground and then they paint a stripe over it and then if you go past that What lock, happens if you pick the cart up? Let's I don't find know. out. Let's find out for science. I feel like for some reason Al Borland should know this. Do you know any about anything about this? No, I've definitely experienced it, but I don't know how it works, and I don't know what happens if you pick it up. Yeah, lock them wheels. Uh, That's what it, anyways, Swift's wheels I've get locked it was on the baloney. one. Mm. Oh, you thought it was just a like? Yeah. What they're just telling the like? Yes. Homeless population. They're just. You know, they, oh, the, if you take it past his lines, they're yes. gonna do it anyway. But they can't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what that reminds me of? <laughs> the painted. How speed many shopping bumps cars do people in this that, office have that aren't <laughs> speed bumps? Have you guys? Been in oh no! Lots like that. Wait, they're fake. They just paint basically a big yellow area where it's like a. Do speed they bump. shade it? It sometimes they put the stripes on it. Sometimes they don't. But you slow down every time, and then you roll over, and you're like, "Wait, there's no bump." Oh, <laughs> that's that's it's funny. genius. See, that's what I thought the sign was. Yeah. Electronic and magnetic systems are used for this purpose. So there is a thin wire which locks the wheel clamp as the car passes over it. Yeah, so it's magnetic. Little wire cutter, magnetism. you're fine. But again, what if you pick it up? That leads me to believe that you could pick it up. But That's those are heavy. Shopping for, carts for they're... one person to just grab. No, but it's only the back wheels. So it, you don't. You just need to raise the back. It, now what are we doing here? We're ruining. Shopping carts are going to go wild now. Yeah, uh, we've let the people know. Go get them, people. <laughs> go get I mean, your shopping if, carts. If a shopping, if if the way around your security system is just to slightly raise it for, I don't know. Three to, three to five inches of movement. Like, it, this is not good. It's no different than you the, thought the, it was all fake, Mike. Yeah, it's no different than you know the little uh, alarm when you walk in that checks the sensor. You know, you just lift it over to that when you're leaving out the door. It's the same exact principle. That's fair, but they will see you. Like part of part of being a, a good thief is they don't see it happen. If you're you running, t- we gotta come put out the stuff over your head. Catch alarm, me, Kevin! Alarm didn't go off. It's it's free. It's mine. 
Yeah, get the UTK, the ultimate theft kit. <laughs> at uh, <laughs> All right, uh, Dal, uh, Darren Waller. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, you can't, you can't have like a tremendous amount of confidence, but six, five, and six targets. I mean, five for 50? You only show up as the tight end 16, but five for 51 is like it could go way worse. Yeah, I, I think he's a, a, a fine middling guy that if he gets a touchdown, you're going to be happy. And I, I do think he's got a baseline that's six fantasy Brooks, points. Brooks, have you stolen any shopping carts? I have not in my day. Okay. About, about to say, if you enjoyed that little uh, back and <laughs> forth there about shopping carts, <laughs> make sure you check out the Spitballers Comedy Podcast. No, we talk about shopping carts exclusively from it's about. It's a shopping yes. cart podcast. I, I need to see this happen. <laughs> it's, it's, we, Mike, it, you going to go try it? Well, I just I, yeah, I have. Look, there's. There's multiple people on the set telling me it's true. I don't believe you. <laughs> it's not every parking lot. No, no, no. It's got to have Walmart. The... Definitely. Yeah, I mean, uh, you you can Target. tell because you look at the carts and the back wheels have the little yeah. thing on them. The magnet locks. <laughs> yeah, the magnet locks, as we call them. Oh man, I'm looking into this. Yeah. Mike thought it was a lie all these years. Yeah. All right, quick break. Back with some more matchups. Look, you know when you're driving on the freeway yeah. and they're like, speeds monitored by aircraft. Yeah, that's nonsense. No, they aren't. That's nonsense. No, they are not. What are you- Where does that come from? So I believe that it- they do do that, but they've got to do it once. You know what I mean? Like, they've, they've got to take a plane, snap it, you know, see that they're speeding, snap the license Here- plate, and then they're like, we did it. We Here's can put the crazy. sign up. We monitor by aircraft. You know how they do the uh, the, the cameras on the freeways sometimes? Yeah. You know, certain jurisdictions allow that, uh-huh. and then they give you tickets off of it. Mm-hmm. If the goal is just to have people not speed, I don't know how much that camera system costs, but I know it's hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, to implement those on, on freeways all over the, uh, you know, wherever you're living. Right. If you just put a non-functioning police vehicle mm-hmm. with lights on where every one of those cameras was, Ain't nobody speeding there. Yeah, that's true. You just think somebody's pulled over and you're like, oh, gosh, I got to slow down. I've always heard the best s- traffic safety device is a rear view mirror with a police officer in it. Yeah, hmm. that's yeah, for cause, sure. Cause, Can they build those into the mirrors? Yeah. <laughs> it's like a little sticker you put on for your teenagers. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> this cop's been following me everywhere. <laughs> He won't um, lay off. Normally, I'd apologize for these side <laughs> side hustles here on the show, uh, but it's week eighteen. All right, it's week eighteen, and again, you can you can visit our uh, shopping cart podcast <laughs> that we we resume. It's hard to go back to football. Uh, Seattle eight and eight. The Cardinals four and twelve. DraftKings Sportsbook line: Seattle minus three. The over under is forty eight. I said a prayer uh, this week that the Cardinals would lose this ball game. For goodness sakes, the yeah. Seattle has something to play for. They. I think that the, um, I think that Seattle's a really good chance of being in the playoffs. I mean, if they beat Arizona, and the Bears beat the Packers, Seattle's in, and be- Al's sad. I believe Geno Smith. What is it like a million, two million dollars? Yeah. It's a huge bonus for if playoffs the, if the Seahawks make the playoffs. So you know he's going to be fighting. Not that he wouldn't be trying two to play million his best dollars. anyways, but super important. Um, he's going to try to win now. <laughs> yeah, I. I think the Cardinals win this game. No! Yeah, I have, I have a really bad feeling. It's just the most Cardinals thing to do. No, just but continue the Jets, ruining your future. The Jets can beat New England. Or, sorry, New England can beat the Jets. They yeah. probably will. So Arizona will jump them. They, this is the, you lose this game, they you get would. Marvin Harrison. Let me just, you yeah. lose this game, Marvin Harrison is a Cardinal. Yeah, but if you win, you feel good for a couple minutes. You do a bunch of high Arizona, pops. lay down. Lay down. Everybody lay down. <laughs> like on the field. Yes. All right. All right. But but uh Seattle fantasy, beat them in week seven. Fantasy wise. Cardinals were good a, last week. James Conner's gonna be good again. It's a fun game for fantasy. The yeah. Seattle Seattle just gave up I think six hundred thousand yards to Jalen Warren and Najee Harris last week, and now they face a significantly better running back in James Conner. Yeah. yeah, I mean this this really is a great game for fantasy. If you want players where you know they're motivated, both sides of the ball, the Cardinals are playing to prove they are winners they are playing to upset the divisional opponent the Seahawks are playing to get in the playoffs so uh, both of these defenses have not been as good as either hoped uh even after some acquisitions for the Seahawks and both offenses are actually clicking now the, with Geno back 
He's looking good. I, I, I want pieces all across this. Uh, Kyler's in. Connor's in. Uh, McBride is in. What are you doing with the Seahawks wide receivers? I think that's the that's the conundrum. You know, is is JSN trustable in Week 18? Yeah, I mean, it's hard. He had one catch for 12 yards and a touchdown. Tyler Lockett had one catch last week. So, um, trustable against Arizona? Probably. Yeah, I think probably. If you're in a position where you have to, I'm I'm okay with it. Yeah, the the Arizona Cardinals defense, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers defense that they played against last week, sometimes they don't show up and sometimes they, they're really good. The Cardinals can't show up. They don't have the personnel to like really lock someone down. So I I I think I'm fine with all three Seattle Seahawks wide receivers in this matchup. Um all right, Trey McBride? Yep. Do you play Trey McBride? Yes, you do. Greg Dorch? Little sneaky 7 for 82 last week. He Cardinals at home. Yeah, I think that he could be. I don't know if I have the courage for a championship run, but let's see over the past oh, 6 Jason, games. You're right. That Arizona's going to win? Yeah. 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 Uh, Cardinals are at home. Past six games, four of them, Greg Dorch has been a double-digit player. Double-digit fantasy points. Now, two of them were complete duds against Pittsburgh and San Francisco. So you'd get Dorched in this but one? I, like, Dorch is, if you are struggling, then Dorch is probably on your waiver wire and and has a an upside at least. Yeah, Maybe. I'm not. I'm not excited That's, to play the door. I'm, I'm. I'm not saying I'm excited to do it, but just like if the you're Arizona excited, Cardinals. if it, if you're excited, it's like I'm playing the door. If you're not excited, it's like mm, I'm not gonna play Greg. Mm. That's how you have to do that. All right, like, Greg is. Who wants to play Greg? No okay. one wants to play Greg. What about Gregory? Even worse. <laughs> oh no! I'm sorry, Greg. Sorry, Gregs. <laughs> but you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, they don't want to be called Greg. You, you see your license. Yeah, you're you looking go. for nicknames. And G, G's G right. Dorch, Ooh, that's, that's nice. G Dorch, I don't know. All right, uh, Kansas City ten and six. The Chargers are five and eleven. L uh, L A is three and a half point. R three and a half point favorites. Over under thirty five. You know, Kansas City's not playing their players. So Clyde Edwards, Clyde Edwards Alaire, I think is probably going to be a pretty good play. I mean the the Chargers have packed it in. They've left the NFL in this season and so uh, Clyde Edwards Alaire I think we'll get we'll get run in no, this game no. I'm, I'm my reaction to that is the same as yours to the Dorch I'm not I'm not excited about a bunch of backups and Clyde Clyde can't overcome much I think the Char Chargers are favored they're gonna win the game I've got my I picked the Chargers to win so I don't know if Clyde's gonna be great or not yeah, I mean, obviously most of the starters aren't going to be playing. It's going to be much more difficult to run with Blaine Gabbert there than with Patrick Mahomes there. But I do think Clyde could end up in a game like this with 20 opportunities. He could end okay. up being the, yeah, the it could be a really run-first offense. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it, it, he could end up looking how Austin Eckler has looked for a lot of the last so few you weeks, which is 17-plus opportunities and doing not much with him. Um, no, I would play Eckler over uh, over Pacheco because it's not just well, the Pacheco, offensive. Yeah, but what about Clyde? Or Clyde. Right. Uh, it's not just the offensive stars that will be sitting. It's kind of like when you were talking about going up against the Rams. They won't have uh, Donald. I would imagine Chris Jones is not going to play in this game, so uh, it should be easier sledding. It's, it's a stupid, gross game. It really is. Yeah. All right. The Rams are nine and seven. The Forty Nine ers are twelve and four. Carson Wentz, Sam Darnold battle we all needed. The number two and number three pick of years ago, <laughs> 2017 and 2018. The Rams are not playing their starters, minus Puka trying to accomplish a rookie record. Um, so four for 29 is what he needs. Otherwise, you're going to see Ronnie Rivers, Demarcus Robinson, Tutu Atwell. Oh, man. No. No, no, Sa thank you. San Francisco's favored. They're not playing their starters. Uh, yeah. Jordan yeah. Mason's going to get a ton of work. Sam Darnold is better than Carson Wentz. Yeah, that's. I was going to say probably why they're favored. Sam Darnold leading this off because it's still the same scheme. You don't, you won't have the positional players, but you're going to have, you know, this San Francisco team that works with every single quarterback that they put in the system. Where McVay is truly an offensive genius, but can Carson Wentz with a lower cast of characters put up a fight against the 49ers and I would say no 
Yeah, a dumb game. Dumb, dumb game. Yeah, you played Jordan Mason. You hopefully don't need to play Puka. Um, would you play Puka or Demarcus Robinson? Demarcus Robinson. Yeah, makes yeah you got to take the snaps. Which is, I mean, the perfect example of Week 18. Dallas is 11-5, and five, taking on the 4-12 and 12 Commanders. Ron Rivera's last game as a Commanders head coach, uh, most likely. Dallas, 13-point road favorites. The over-under is 47. It means a ton to Dallas. Um, they win the NFC East with a victory here. So, you know, Dak and CD and Cooks and um, Ferguson and Pollard, like you just line them up, put them out there on the field. It's one of the offenses you can have confidence in this week. Yep. And then there's another team. <laughs> yeah, the the Washington Commanders Oof. are going to be out there throwing a ton, um, trying to oh, avoid. Oh, getting sacked I mean, so Sam, much. Sam Howell will be looking at the stars. And there is, I mean, he, he'll be on his back this entire game. The Cowboys are going to sack him so much. So, obviously, great DST. If you've got the Dallas Cowboys, they're going to have a couple turnovers and six sacks. And J.P. Finley, who reports for the Commanders, says that there's an, a vibe that the veterans <laughs> like the veterans in Washington are sitting this week. I get a vibe. Oh, for real? Yeah, yep. like several of the veterans that they probably just don't want to. Like Terry McLaurin? I don't know about that. Maybe. I mean, he's one of their leaders and a veteran. If if there's a vibe that veterans are sitting, I can't imagine it would not include Terry. Yeah, it just depends if Sam Howell's like crying, like, please don't take him from me. Oh, Sam Howell doesn't even throw it to yeah. Terry. Oh, that's true. Every time he runs into him, he's like, wait, who, so, are, I mean, who are you? Look, Washington doesn't want to win this game. They, if they if they lose it, they secure the number two pick. So it's a win-win or a lose-lose, right? However you want to look at it. Dallas gets what they want. Washington gets what they want. And uh, I don't know. They, Ron Rivera might ask his players to run backwards in this one more than normal. Yeah, you, you'll probably have Tony Pollard having an absolutely outstanding game. You expect the Dallas Cowboys to walk over the – commanders and and you can walk in the Run, running game yeah. on them no problem <laughs> they are it's like like the video of the when they give that old guy the handoff yeah <laughs> i mean there's i mean rico dowdle might have a game in this one he yes that's tony pollard i agree he should be good but i think there's a chance that rico dowdle cleans up in the second half sure yeah i would be fine playing rico dowdle and here we are we get to talk about the final game of the week the final game of the year and a game that matters. It's a good yeah. one. Buffalo at ten and six. Miami at eleven and five. The DraftKings Sportsbook line: Buffalo on the road minus two and a half. Over under is forty eight points. It's been bet down a little from the fifty and a half point over under, but this is a playoff game. You know, if, if Buffalo loses this game, they are eliminated. If they win this game, I was thinking about this, like for this up and down season for Buffalo. And everything that it's been, this confusion about the offense, the firing of their offensive coordinator, the is it over for Stephon Diggs? And, you know, is, is even Sean McDermott, could he be out? You know, there's talk of Harbaugh and are the Buffalo Bills in contention for that? Look, if they win this ball game, they're the number two AFC team after all of that. I just thought that that was yeah. kind of shocking. Like you, It's amazing. When you're able to look back on the season, if they win this ball game, which they are favored to do, they have finished number two. Yeah, and and, and the, the coordinator change really made a big difference. I mean, this was a team that was losing a lot of their games. They've been on fire lately, and they've really changed their scheme. They are now all of a sudden a run-first team, even though they've got Josh Allen. They are pounding the rock and doing it with, with great success now. Including Allen on the goal line. I mean, that's how he yeah. got his two touchdowns last week. Yeah, for sure. He's he's. Kind of turned into a Jalen Hurts a little bit. They're doing the tush push. It's like a, a slightly different one where they've got one guy behind him doing. Have it, you but... seen the origination of the tush push? Have no, you seen this? Uh -uh. So, um, it's very interesting because there was uh, there's some NFL Films clips on the sidelines of one of the uh, I think it was one of the backup tight ends, um, maybe on Indianapolis, just talking about like years ago, saying you know what would be good is if like you just put a big guy in there and had like one guy push him or like two guys push him. And then they go to kind of the origination of when it happened, which was Nick Sirianni, mm, really? who, who was the uh, offensive specialist coordinator for Indianapolis. And he subbed out, I believe, Matt Ryan or Carson Wentz and put in Jacoby Brissett. 
and then one guy helped push Jacoby Dude, Brissett. Jacoby was elite at the one yard and, sneak, and then that evol- it evolved from there. But like Sirianni, who's obviously the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, was involved in the Jacoby Brissett, and they, it shows him on the sideline, like literally jumping into another coach's arms with glee over how it worked. Oh, that's awesome! And so, um, yeah, he he enjoys it. But Buffalo, Miami, uh, right now, Seth Walder put this out there according to ESPN Analytics. The most likely NFC title game is the Cowboys 49ers with a 44% chance to occur, and the most likely AFC title game right now is Bills-Ravens. That's the highest probability. Okay. And, um, you know, it, this one should be fun. Uh, now, Diggs was great against them a long, long time ago. <laughs> yeah, over the course of the season now, when you adjust for schedule, the Dolphins have been great against the run. They're number two in the league. They've really turned it on. Um, the... The Buffalo Bills have been winning running the ball, but they might need to throw it here. What do you, do you, do you what do you do him? with Diggs? I mean, this is an important game with a high over time. under. One more. You, let's go with the let's go with the default phrase. Ready? You gotta play Diggs. <laughs> is that what we've been saying? Or so is here, it yeah. the, here's you don't the deal. sit Diggs? Here's the deal. If you're playing in week eighteen and you've got Diggs, I think you've already made your decision and you've been benching him. Because I think if you've been playing him, you probably didn't get to your game. I mean, here's his, not fantasy finishes, here's his fantasy points for the last month. 4.4, 6.8, 5.4, 5.1. That's after their bye week. Is, is he, I mean. You dorching? You're not dorching over no, You're not, no, not no, dorching no, over no, Dick. But how about Jordan Addison against Detroit? Yeah, I like that matchup. I would go Jordan Addison. Yeah, I don't mind that. Uh, Drake London against the Saints. No. I'll go Diggs. Yeah. Uh, let's go Brandon Cooks against the Commanders. I'll go Diggs. I'll go Diggs. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, on the other side, Tyreek Hill had some stuff going on. Saw yeah. him in a walking boot, too. Had a house uh, fire. Yeah, he uh, he was outside that house in a walking boot, but he will – I mean, look, they're, they're playing for something here. They, they need him desperately in this game. They're – are almost certainly going to be without Jalen Waddle. Um, he didn't practice on Thursday. He had a high ankle sprain. Already missed last week. I can't fathom he plays. That that would not nothing this week would shock me more than Jalen Waddle making it out there. So Tyreek Hill is going to be extremely important. You guys expect Mostert to be back out there, and if so, would you play him in H N? I think he'll be out there. I uh, will play either and both if they are if they are there. Either and both. Durham Smythe. Hey, hey that, was last good, week. that was a good call last Smythe week. Smythe week, yeah. three for 54. Yeah, not bad. Dalton Kincaid last week got back out uh, and produced four for 87, some big plays. I'll be very curious what the passing offense looks like for Buffalo in 2024. Yeah, Dalton Kincaid was in on 55% of the snaps. They also missed him on another bomb. Who, do you, bomb. Have, who do you have winning this game? Buffalo. Easy. Um, I, easy. I'm going to say Buffalo by 12 points. Wow. I think they smoke them. I, so, I, I think Miami wins this game. And obviously, Buffalo already smoked them earlier, 48-20, to 20, uh, when they played last time in week you, four. To me, if you take one piece away from the ensemble, I have not seen – you're talking about Jalen Waddle. Yeah, I'm talking about Jalen Waddle and maybe Mostert. You take a piece or two away from this Dolphins team. I've never been proven. I've never. They've never stepped up to the plate. Well, like look at their game log of how many good teams has Miami beaten? Yeah, the Dallas game was like, like they their beat they first beat them twenty second yeah. time. So they just got smashed by Baltimore. They beat the Cowboys by two points. We beat the Jets. They lost to the Titans. I would yeah. mean like a good team that they a really good win yeah. on that, their record at like n with all the information now that we know is Dallas. They beat Dallas by two points. Well, and it, it's funny because the this Buffalo team this is the kind of game they lose. The one that they really need to win. That's kind of been the story for them too. So it'll be it'll a it'll tie. be fun. This is a night game, right? I mean Sunday night football. Yep, so the final one. Couple updates here. Trevor Lawrence, questionable. So um, he's moving forward. I saw another report on Christian Kirk, how great he looks, recovering from the core muscle injury. Hmm. And, uh, well, here we go. Fantasy face-off. Fantasy face-off, presented by DraftKings. 
Now, how much of your brain do you use? What is the scientific amount? You use your whole brain. I okay, believe that stop is Stop it, Mike. Stop true. it. What's the, the amount that, that gets You mean like put, the, the sci-fi, you only use 10% of your brain? Thank you. Okay, whatever it is. All of my brain, you know, obviously has been so committed to winning the league of record, which of I, course yeah. it accomplished because I, my brain, when you put it, you know, when you attach it to a, a task. Right. But it may have come at the expense of something <laughs> in my life. Right, yes. And uh, I did, I did... Um, did lose. Did get, I did lose again. You did get the quattro. <laughs> Got the quattro, which means we end the year with uh, Jason with 10 first place finishes. Thank you. That's uh, not where you want to be. And uh, <laughs> You don't want to be at Mike, the top? Mike oh. had nine second place finishes. That's that's where the magic is. And uh, I had eight third place finishes. So I had You not, don't want to be there. I had nine times I was not oh, I forgot. spinning. Mike, you're right. First the worst, second the best. Yeah. I forgot the old adage. What you? What about third? The turd. turd. Yeah. I'm a turd. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, my trophy says on the way. Um, all right. <laughs> Shall we spin this stupid wheel and see how bad this gets? Let's go. Wheel of Shame. Yeah, go ahead. Spin, that spin the stupid wheel all right. for my stupid four in a row. We got you know, it was great. Mike had lost three in a row, and it felt real nice and balanced. Day. Right, bros. Loser glasses. Loser. Loser glasses. Now, you're not allowed to look at the front of the glasses to see what they say. You just got to put on those Now, glasses. wait. I got a pinwheel hat? Yep. You yeah. got a nice little stupid hat, and you got these glasses, and you're not going to... Does he have a lolly? The Am rules... I going to be able to see my roster? N no. Uh, well, the rules are you can take the glasses, you can move the glasses off just a little bit to see your... Your roster, but otherwise, oh yeah, I said you can't look at the front. What now can what you is, What can you see right now? Absolutely nothing. Do you, awesome. do you get your microphone. Yeah, here you go. There you go. Why do I need my microphone? Well, well because it's, we it's do a, a podcast. It's a podcast. So you gotta, you okay, gotta I can see nothing. Okay, good. So let's kick it off here. No, I do can't read my roster. Well, my when it comes time, I'll let you. Uh, you want I'll, me to start, Jay? Yeah, you start. All right, my quarterback is the going to be. <laughs> It's a pie in the face. <laughs> it's a pie in the face. Oh. Oh, no. It's a pie in the face. You can take the glasses off now so you can see. <laughs> oh, man. That was good. Did we go? Is that shaving cream or is that I, whipped cream? I I hope it's whipped cream. It's whipped cream. It's delicious. Okay. <laughs> oh, man. Well, it's just. It <laughs> Oh, you're looking good, Andy. You're All looking right. really good. The Quattro you know, got you. I, I don't know if I've ever had a pie in the face, and it um, How's it, it exceeds expectations. <laughs> um, startling, startling, a little in the nostrils. Oh, so it's, um, thank you for the eye protection. You're welcome. Um, we just we look out for our good buddies. Um, congratulations. Is he supposed to still wear the glasses? No, he can't see with oh. the glasses. The, the he's got the opposite glasses now, like the uh, uh, the the suntan. It kind of looks like a clown. So we're we're playing <laughs> we're playing this. Can I get a rag or something? <laughs> what? Nope. Just for the nostrils. All right. Uh, YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. All right. My my quarterback. I'm Wait. Going we're we're playing again this week, right? But we're yeah. playing for money. You guys want to make a bet? Sure. Sure. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, I've got Justin Fields against the Green Bay Packers at seventy two hundred dollars as my quarterback. I spent down on the crazy man Nick Mullins at fifty one hundred. Who is yours, Mike? Fields. Uh, he's playing against Nick Mullins going against the Detroit Lions. Uh, good passing, uh, good team to yeah. pass on. No, it makes sense. I went Dak. Oh, okay. Oh, you went Dak CD. Of course oh, wow. you did. Of course you Dak did. Dak 8,000. One, one more time. Yeah. One more time, sweetness. I don't, Dak and CD. I don't blame That's you That's fun. All right. It's delicious. All right. Thank you for the treat. You're, You're welcome. Here we go. Jordan Mason against the Rams. Sure. 4,600. Pierre Strong Jr. <laughs> against the Cincinnati Bengals for four thousand. Oh, someone's gonna have a, a lot of good wide receivers there. Uh, my running backs are Tony Pollard at sixty five hundred against the Washington Manders. That's no fun. And James Conner okay. sixty one hundred against Seattle. Um, Rashad White. Okay, seventy six hundred. Okay, at we Carolina. They're playing for a lot. Yeah, yeah. James Conner, 6,100 against Arizona. 
All right, my wide receivers. I got Amon Ross St. Brown against the Minnesota Vikings at 8,600. I'm going for it. I got Jamar Chase at 7,300. He said he's going to play. If you're going to be on the field, you better do something. And then Jordan Addison against the Detroit Lions at 5,300. Um, I went with Amon Ross St. Brown as well. Uh, well that's 8, it 8, for 700. me. <laughs> and I have stacked my quarterback with a guy named Justin Jefferson okay. at 8,500. And then... I'm going with the final hoorah of the old man. Oh, what? I've got Adam Thielen at 6,000. Thank, thank you, Jason, for believing in me. You're welcome. I went with uh, CD Lamb, yeah. as you expected. Yeah, 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 9,300 yeah. for CD. He might have another 17 receptions or something against Washington. I went with uh, Bargain uh, for the next two guys. Christian Kirk at 3,000. Christian Kirk, 3,000. Uh, he's going to play, and he's going to be great. Darius Slayton at 4,000 Okay, uh, for my other wide receiver. All right, now we'll close it out. I have James Conner at my flex, so we have canceled him out at 6,100. Got my guy, Juwan Johnson, taking on the Atlanta Falcons at just 3,600. And I had this weird gap of money where I, I couldn't really improve a player. So I paid. I, I got the Raiders, guys, at 3,300 wow, going okay. against the Denver Broncos. All right. Um, I – uh, ran out of money <laughs> so <laughs> my final guys are uh michael mayer uh rookie what? tight end Is he 3, even playing? uh i hope so uh I'll, I'll pivot if he's not but he's uh going up against i just looked who's playing against vance joseph defense and not yeah put him in. that's fair uh, i have christian kirk uh at three thousand. i hope he's playing um and the vikings defense uh against detroit you know mayor hasn't played in two weeks well, I think he's going to play this week. Okay. You're Juwan Johnson is my tight end. Oh, you dog. Pierre Strong Jr. is my oh, come on. Is my flex. And uh, a little defense known as the Dallas Cowboys. Wow. At 4,100 against Washington. Uh, we do have an update here uh, from Twitter. Michael Mayer looking like an injury scratch again for Sunday. I will look for a pivot. <laughs> <laughs> week 18, baby. Week 18. All right. Uh, that I was, already won this game. <laughs> that was Fantasy Faceoff presented by DraftKings. <laughs> Download the DraftKings app right now and use the promo code BALLERS, the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use the code BALLERS. New customers can play free for a share of millions in prizes with your first $5 deposit. Mike, what's coming on Tuesday, Thursday? So we got uh, Brooks. It's the footy award or footy nominations. Am I correct? Footy nominations on Tuesday. Don't mm -hmm. miss it. We are narrowing down the, li the list, the footies. They will go through the week. <laughs> You have ruined your pop filter, Andy. I ruined, made more delicious. I don't know. Okay, well, that's TBD. Ooh, I'm gonna add some if, whipped cream to my microphone. Sorry, and if you're new, that's our yearly fantasy football award show. You you can't miss it, and we need your votes. Yes, it is the greatest award show in the history of mankind. And then just a a reminder: we're going. We are two shows a week starting next week. However, that's just this podcast. Dynasty. We're into prospect season. Get on the Dynasty podcast. Very excited to talk about these new players. Every Wednesday. Every Wednesday, the DFS podcast runs through the playoffs because you can still play DFS through then. So, Borg and Bets are going to help you win. Spitballers pod every Monday. We don't really go away. No. No, I'm going to go away and wash my face. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but then back to more shows. So, thank you for joining us. Good luck this weekend. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.